So I finally got the Legion 7 i into the studio, and for those of you familiar with my channel, know that I've already reviewed the 5i. Think of the 7i as the more expensive premium version of the 5i. Now, for all you AMD fanboys out there, you cannot buy the 7i with an AMD CPU. So if that's exactly what you want, then the 5i is a better option. I also had an extravagant unboxing prepared for you, but they shipped me this laptop already open. So in the box, you get the laptop and a 230 watt power brick. This is the Lenovo one. It looks nicer than the typical Chaconia ones that come from other vendors. Now, there are a lot of similarities to the 5i, even like you put them beside each other and they look exactly the same. The big difference though, is that when you buy the 7i, not only are you getting a thinner and lighter laptop at 4.6 pounds, you're also getting a metal laptop. The finish on this is much better than the finish on this. The other thing to note is that you get a lot more RGB. For example, on the top lid, the Legion logo actually glows, where on this guy, it does not. You have LED lights coming out of the exhaust vents. You also have this really cool LED strip on the bottom, which the 5i does not support. And you have per key RGB lighting. If you want RGB lighting on the 5i, you have to pay extra. And that only gets you four zones of RGB. Now, even though the keyboard layouts are the same on both laptops, the travel distance on the keys are different. 1.3 millimeters on the 7i, compared to 1.5 on the 5i. This is a thicker chassis, therefore there's more room to put deeper switches. I will say though, the difference is very minor, even though I do prefer to type on the 5i, the 7i is still comfortable. It's just not as comfortable as the 5i. Of course, you got that per key RGB lighting. You have the same size touchpad. Both of them are plastic, but feel very accurate. Sticker placement is actually better on the 5i. The sticker guy who's in charge of the 5i lineup does a better job of keeping them straight compared to the mad lad who's in charge of the 7i. These are just way too crooked for my liking. The other thing to note is that you have a grill here to allow airflow in, whereas on the 5i, you do not. Now ports are kind of interesting. The one thing I really like about the 7i is it has these glowing lights on the back which indicate exactly where the port is. So for example, if, if you're trying to plug a cable in the back, you can just look at the colored lights and get a better indication. Now these do have the type on it as well, but they don't glow. So it's a little bit harder to see, especially at night, whereas this will glow and you can see it any time of the day. The port setup is also a bit different. On the 7i, you have two USB type C ports on the left hand side. One of them is Thunderbolt 3. And on the back, you have a HDMI port, USB port, ethernet jack, another USB port, and of course your power connector. On the right hand side, you have a USB port. Now the 5i has very similar ports, but the big difference is you don't get those two USB type C ports on the left. Instead, it has one USB type C port on the back, but it's not Thunderbolt 3. Speaker placement is also different. These are directly facing the bottom of the desk compared to bottom side firing speakers. Both of these only have two two watt speakers. Okay, I was not expecting that. Even though both of them have two two watt speakers, the ones on the 7i are significantly louder and brighter. Just like the 5i, the display can be rotated 180 degrees so you can put it flat to the surface. It does have a cutoff switch at the top. So if someone is looking at you through the webcam and you wanna make sure it's private, you can turn it off by just moving the physical switch. Now this display is 240 hertz, just like the 5i that I reviewed, but the big difference comes down to brightness. This was getting over 400 nits of brightness compared to the 340 on the 5i. Color accuracy, color gamut, and all that kind of stuff were the same. Very good color accuracy. So if you're gaming on this, but you also plan to use this for sort of design work, you're going to be able to do that. One of the major reasons to go with the 7i over the 5i is the GPU selection. Like I think the 5i tops out in an RTX 2060, whereas the 7i, you can spec this all the way up to an RTX 2080 Super Max Q. For example, I ran a quick 3D Mark Fire Strike test, and this thing did 
absolutely awesome. It beat out the Acer Triton 500 and came very close to the Blade Pro 17. Cinebench was a little bit lower than the competition, but it was better than the 5i. Lenovo usually takes more of a conservative approach to keeping thermals cooler. I did notice one thing awesome though. When I was performing the 3D Mark Fire Strike test, the fans kicked on and you could hear them but they were nowhere near as loud as some of its competitors. So the vapor chamber inside of here is doing a better job. Internally, there's a lot different. You can tell right away that one's using a vapor chamber and one is not. The 5i is using your standard heat pipe configuration, so thermals should be better on the 7i. You get a bigger battery, 80 watts compared to 58. I was only netting about three and a half hours to four hours of use on the 5i, so I'm expecting significantly more with the 7. You have two slots for two M2 NVMe SSDs compared to one NVMe SSD and a 2.5 inch drive bay. This is fine, it's not a big deal, but the benefit of having two M2 drives is that you can put the same drives in here and run it in a RAID 0 configuration. This just gives you significantly faster drive speeds. RAM is upgradable, there's two slots, so Lenovo says you can do up to 32, but I feel like you can push this to 64. And you also have a swappable Wi-Fi card, so if that's something you wanna upgrade down the road, you can go ahead and do that. So here's the thing, the 7i is obviously more expensive and you are getting more refinements with it, but you have to ask yourself, are all those little extra features worth it for the type of stuff you do? If you're just strictly gaming and you have your headphones on, then I feel like the 5i is more than plenty and you'll save yourself some money. But if you're planning to keep this for a very long time and you want some flexibility with the Thunderbolt 3 port and you want the premium features of a laptop that's just gonna look better, and feel better to use, then the 7i makes a lot more sense. Plus you have the option to spec it with a lot more beefier GPUs. Now, as always, this is an unboxing and feature overview, which means I still have a full review coming up. So let me know all of your questions about what you want me to cover on the 7i in the comment section down below. If you're interested in picking this up, there'll be links in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.